Uh, there is one other stock right now that I have been intently watching from earlier today. We all have been watching the stock from earlier today. Uh, not as much Mara, but the stock Lucy. If my student Felix is here coming off our coaching call, I hope he's here right now. He's probably cracking up at this. So earlier on the Lucy trade, we've been looking for this since the morning, since 1035 Eastern time. Actually, I want to get the timestamp even out there on the recording side too. If you could bear with me just for a split moment. We've been looking for this since 1025 Eastern time, myself and Felix. So, you know, just earlier, this ended up making a nice breakout this morning, this Lucy trade. So the, the thing with it is that it ended up showing a pretty clean chart level on this stock earlier in the morning. There were a bunch of levels that we could have taken the time to have plotted here. Um, but if anything, a couple of things that I wrote was that, you know, 323 was just a strong chart level, if anything. And that was like later into the pre-market around 849 in the morning. That was kind of the first comment about like 323 as a potentially strong chart level. Right. Now, after that, at 1025 in the morning, I was on my call with Felix here and you know, we were both saying, well, you know, we're kind of looking for Lucy to find that support right around 325, around that 325 level, right? So I actually have 323 here as the chart level. And this is like, you know, something I don't always happen to use folks. So, you know, as a new trader here, please don't think this is like really a prime strategy for what I follow. It's just really miscellaneous, but I thought it was something that could have helped me out a little bit here. I ended up using actually a Fibonacci retracement on this uh, stock. I went from the closing price from yesterday to the uh, high. And with that, I ended up realizing that we had some good alignment between, I think this is the 38.2% retracement. That's right off of the price 332 roughly. Notice that's where I had the blue line that was there, the darker blue. So this is basically the area that I was looking for support just a moment ago uh, prior to Traders Talk beginning. So I actually just leaned into this trade just as we were kind of reviewing the other one. I have my stop set right below the lows here at this point. So if it does break lower, then obviously I'm going to take a small, tiny loss on it, if anything. But I thought it was worth the worth while for the entry. The key, though, is, is that if you have your levels plotted, then you need to make sure the stock breaks under that first uh, because it may keep dropping, right? I mean, there are plenty of times where I'm calling out a level and otherwise it breaks under it and it doesn't break back through it. It doesn't break back over the level again. So this afforded me a little bounce here right now, correct? But that's where you got to have your stops tight and realize that it needs to make that big move shortly after. It needs to. That's just what we expect. So you don't want to fight that, right? Um, Josh Levitan's 1,000 shares does not control Lucy here. That's up 134% in trading 50 million shares on the day today, right? And the reason I say it that way is because I know that none of us here are, here are that egotistical to think that you know their shares control the direction of the stock. But if we're not thinking that way, then what are we thinking? You know what I mean? Do you think that you're going to be able to sway the, the movement of the stock then? Like, don't fight it. So if this didn't make a big reaction here off of 323 so far, then I'd be a little concerned. That's all. Uh, Ryan's saying, do you always set your stop at the VWAP? I do not. I always set my stop under the big level that I took the time to enter from. So like on Mara there, maybe off of the 970, the fact the VWAP was like coinciding with that allowed for a little entry there kind of with the combination of the two. So I just use this as like the backup support level of the two. When you have two levels that are really tight to each other, it's a good thing, especially if they have two separate meanings to them. Like if there's like 50,000 share iceberg order and you took the time to plot that. And when you look on the historical chart, you know, maybe four pennies above that, there is a really strong historical level that's, you know, really strong. All right. Well, if they have two completely separate meanings there and they're just pennies apart. I like that. That's kind of like a big range of support or, or resistance. Actually, how about this? Not to uh, 
jump too far or around here, folks. Actually, we got a bunch of emails. I got to take the time to go through and answer here before we wrap. And it hasn't made that big move yet. If it keeps affording you the chance to get there, then you have to take it. Might sound insane to look for the same thing to happen, expecting a different result. But like even on Lucy, this is not shortable, the stock. It's hard to borrow. But look at the amount of times this damn thing was testing 350, right? Eventually led to a drop and a pretty good break of support. So the more times it's cracking that support level, eventually it's going to lead to a drop off, maybe a short opportunity if you're able. So, you know, I don't mind taking a trade a couple times, even if I take a small loss initially because of the probability of it getting that bigger reaction shortly after. Hey, if I take a minus three to make a plus 22, am I crying at the end of the plus 22? No. If I have to take a minus two, minus three, and then get the plus 22, I'm still in the plus. I'm still pretty happy. So if you do that five, six times over and your stops are not tight, yes, that's where it's going to like kind of add up a decent amount and just it doesn't justify the means. So that's where we have to work together, you and I. And I'm just saying that as a generic comment to all of us here, just to you know, any one of us watching this trader's talk, if you're that type of trader where you're getting stuck in a bunch of losing trades, you're trying to take the same trade over and over, well, maybe you're focused on the right level, but you're setting your stops way too uh, wide, way too loose. Um, or otherwise, maybe you're not focused on the right level in general. If that's the case, then we just have to kind of align you with knowing what's the right level to watch. That's all. That's actually an easier fix, technically. But then otherwise on Lucy, well, hey, I, you know, this has made a very good reaction off of the level I took the time to recognize. So even now, just to lock up a little money off of that one level and take half of my position out here. I, I think that justifies just getting in the trade, right? So it's all about knowing where your big levels are first. Become a Cyber Group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.